Friday, Friday, woohoo! Friday, the twenty fifth of August, to be exact, guys. And as always, we're going to look back at yesterday's trades. We're going to look at today's potential trades, and we're going to look at the important news for today as well. Um, so let's take a look firstly at Canadian dollar, Japanese yen. So from yesterday, we were looking to buy this pair because, as you can see, structurally. Yeah, it come back down to this trend line, this low held because of this wick closing back inside it. Um, and we like this wick and it was a good support uh, area as well. So we were just trying to take price back up to this last high here. Um, so that was the idea, guys. There's some, you know, there's something going on with the yen. The markets are... There's just a shake-up at the moment. Yeah, something's happening. The indices are dropping. So it's been particularly tricky. But anyway, let's take a look on the H1 and see if we could trade this pair. Um, so we could, guys, yeah. So as you can see, price started to build up on the H1. Yeah, and what I was looking for, guys, is was when price got up to here. This is basically when I start looking at the markets. I wanted price to just come back down to this grey zone, yeah, and potentially these last highs. But that never happened, guys. I thought it would do with this red candle. I thought that would bring price back down to this level, which was a really nice level because it was this last high and the moving average 20 and our grey zone. But it never happened, guys. And then it's kind of just shot off. We couldn't enter this candle because this candle's so bearish. Yeah. And then before we knew it, the trade was away, guys. Um, and also, you know, like I say, there's something going on with the yen. All right. So we, we didn't get in on this trade. And if you look at the day chart now, yeah, this wick is not filling me with confidence to keep buying this pair. So I wouldn't keep buying this pair, guys, if you asked in this trade. Yeah, this could potentially roll over like a lot of the yen pairs are. All right, so that was Kajian. Yeah, we didn't have a trade there, guys. Uh, the next pair we were looking at was this, was Pound Swiss Franc. And this one I did get into, guys. So what was happening? So price had come down. Yeah, we were looking for longs, guys. Okay, price came up. Yeah, never broke these lows. Yeah, this weekly resistance, sorry, this weekly support level kept holding. And then, you know, eventually we got a break. So we are seeing higher lows, higher highs. Yeah, I know we're at support here, uh, at resistance here, but we, we still had room to move into. So price come down. We got this nice wick that rejected these lows, closed back into above the moving average 20 and this area of support. So like I say, guys, we were just trying to take it back up to these last highs. That was the idea. Um, if we drop down to the H1, because this is what I entered on. And again, guys, this is that trade-off between, you know, a, a, an aggressive trade and perhaps getting in at an earlier price or getting in at the, the safer price, to be quite frank with you. So our first idea was this. As, you know, h one structure had come down, yeah, and then it had shot up, okay? So this candle, yeah, which was far more bullish than all of these previous candles here, I thought this was good enough to enter, guys, all right? So I entered here. I put my stop just below here. And as you can see, guys, yeah, we got stopped there. I'm actually in a hedge as we speak. Um, so, yeah, it was a, a, an unsuccessful trade. And we've and to be quite frank, guys, we've had a couple of unsuccessful trades this week. Like I say, there's there's there feels like there's change going through the markets at the moment. Yeah, and there's lots of whipsawing, um, which we can look at a bit later. So, yeah, I'm in a hedge now, guys, all right? Um, but you can see there's a bit of, there's an area here of support now, okay? We've had this candle push up. We've had this candle push up. So let's see what price does at this level, see if it continues up. 
The other idea, guys, was wait for a break of this level. Okay, and like I say, that is the more safer trade. Yeah, if we get something like this, then we could take the trade. All right, guys. So, yeah, pound Swiss franc, unsuccessful trade. The last trade idea from yesterday was oil. Where are you, oil? The black gold. Um, and again, you know, this was a trade idea, but we were umming and ahhing a little bit because. This is the day chart, and price has come down, and this candle here has broke these lows. It hasn't broke this low, but it has broke these lows. So we are getting lower lows, only just. Yeah, but we didn't like this wick. Okay, and if we're going to try, and I wouldn't start shorting it today. Yeah, this short idea is over because of this bullish daily candle. But could we trade it yesterday? Uh, and the answer was, well, you could have done. Yeah, I mean, price come up to our grey zone. Yeah, these last H1 highs. Yeah, as as we, you know, said in the analysis vid yesterday. And then we got this bearish candle, which I think is bearish enough. Okay. And you would have made some nice profit on this. You know, take some profit. This is a perfect example of taking profit. It doesn't quite come down and hit our blue line. Yeah, but when you're you when you're this amount in profit, what is this? This would be something like you know a thousand pips or something crazy because we were on oil. Yeah, take some profit. I would have taken some profit at these lows here. Okay, take some profit here and then let some money run. Imagine if you didn't take profit and it come back up and just stopped you out here. Yeah, you would be furious. So take some profit, guys, all right? Don't take all the profit. You can let some profit run. Um, so, yeah, you could have gotten on this candle, guys. Um, but, yeah, that's about it. And then price is shot back up. This isn't bearish enough. This isn't. And then we've broken structure again. So, yeah, like I say, sales are now. We're not looking for sales because of that daily candle. So those were the three trades from yesterday, guys. Uh, let's take a look at today's trades now. Guys, if you enjoyed the recap, then come join us. If you could subscribe to the channel right now, that would be marvelous. Um, also, smash that notification button so you receive an alert every time we post a vid. Um, and if everyone could please smash the like button, yeah? It helps support the vid and the channel. Thank you very much. Um, right, guys, we're going to start with the dollar index. I know I keep talking about the dollar index a lot, but this is what's, um, you know, driving a lot of the, well, it is driving the US dollar strength. Um, and I'm going to look at keeping things simple. All right. Because I've been paying a lot of attention to this level. And rightfully so, guys, it was the last weekly high. All right. And then, you know, as you can see, price has been difficult to read at this level. Yeah, we've got like buyers, sellers, buyers, sellers. OK, but yesterday that dollar strength continued. And what this is a perfectly good example of is follow trend, follow the day trend. Yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. Maybe I've overcomplicated things in here. But if you just look at the, you know, dollar trend, dollar index trend, it's in an uptrend. So expect US dollar strength, you know, simple as that, guys. All right. Um, having said that, complicating things again, you know, we do have a bit more room to move into. But, you know, there is some resistance up here for the dollar. And this resistance was from let me get my big head out of the way. This is from May 23. Okay, so May this year. So, you know, that we may find some resistance up here, but it's still a bit more room to go, guys. All right. So I just wanted to show you that dollar index. You know, keep it simple. It's in an uptrend. Um, and that's led me to look at a couple of US dollar majors, obviously. So the first one was was this was Aussie dollar US dollar. And I you know, I potentially like this trade 
okay because you know price come up to this area of uh resistance we're not a million miles away from the moving average 20 yeah and we've got this nice bearish candle and we are clearly in a downtrend okay so aussie dollar us dollar i do like i just don't like the amount of room that we have to move into before we find support there's not a lot of room to move into there okay so i wanted to show you why i'm not putting that on my list today but one us dollar major i am is gold yeah if we go to gold guys you can see the difference between aussie dollar us dollar and gold us dollar because gold us dollar has lots of room to move into yeah that's the difference here guys so i prefer this as a trade and if we look at gold you know it's clearly in a downtrend it's come back up and it's just got to a really nice level of value and the moving average 20 is dynamic resistance in this case and yesterday's candle not super bearish but we've had a bit of a wick uh, a bit of a rejection at that level all right so you know we like this out of all the us dollar majors we like this to take this lower all right so what are we looking for if we drop down to the h1 guys um we're looking for this so yesterday this is interesting okay so yesterday my gray zone was like this because we had only seen these couple of levels and i talked about this in the live stream and gold never broke this level look at these wicks yeah we you know we on the live stream we were thinking okay this level's broken but it never did yeah and we had two wicks that pushed this back up to these highs all right so we haven't broken this level as yet but what we need to do today guys as well is now you know change this gray zone because we need to take into account these wicks because price could quite easily come down to here and shoot back up again yeah it's an area of support which means there could be buyers all right so that's what i will do with my gray zone today it needs adjusting all right there is also a level here you know that we could potentially look at these last highs so again guys a couple of things could happen what what i really want to see is a break of this gray zone yeah because then this is confirmation that you know this is coming down we get a break of this level yeah then a retest you know we can enter in here and then we can take look to take price lower okay um in terms of a target let's go back to the day chart um so you know we could take price all the way back down to these lows so that is a possibility um and you know i would my first target would be here though guys okay just before this gray zone okay and if you look on the h4 you'll see there's a bit of um resist support here as well okay so this would be my first target guys back down to here but then you know close 80 percent and then leave some profit to run and you don't have to close 80 percent. you could close 70 60 90 72.5 whatever you like um but take some profit guys it just takes it allows you to let the trade run all right so yeah that is my um gold idea if if price does react here and comes back up to these highs we could you know get a bearish reaction here and then look for shorts as well guys but that is more risky than waiting for price you know to break down yeah if we see a breakdown in price this is confirmation that we're coming lower all right guys so yeah gold out of all the us dollar pairs gold i'm looking at um i am also looking at the nasdaq that come hurtling down yesterday and i mean hurtling yeah look at this daily candle bang all right so you know and look how look how it uses that moving average 20 yeah 
it's not an exact science, but look, you know, it's, it's reacted there. So we're just trying to, you know, get on the back of this bearish candle and just take price back down to these lows. Obviously, we need a bit of a retrace first and then we'll come lower. OK, so NASDAQ, we're looking to short this pair. What also gives us the confidence here is the weekly chart. Yeah, because this weekly chart, look at these candles, bearish, bearish, bearish. And I still think we have a bit more room, you know, down to this moving average 20, which is at 14500. So this could also be a target. Um, let's drop down to the H4. This is a bit more of a H4 play. So we've got a couple of levels here where price could um, react. So price could retrace to here, to these this level through here. And in here, we get a bearish reaction. If we do, we can start shorting this pair back down to this level. Um, and when I say bearish reaction, guys, you know what I mean by now. I'm looking for a candle that tells us sellers are in control. And that can be on the H1 and or the H4. All right. It might want to retrace back up to here, guys. Because you've got the moving average 20 coming round. This is also a good level of resistance. And it could react in here. Again, bearish reaction, take price lower. I'd probably take some profit at these lows and then leave some money to run. All right. Um, and the final trade idea for today, um, before I give you my last trade idea for today, guys, um, if I could ask everyone, first of all, to subscribe to the channel right now. Yeah. Um, if we, you could also smash that like button if you enjoy if you enjoy my analysis every morning. Um, and also, guys, don't forget the cool things that we do on the channel. Yeah, we've got the free Discord channel. OK, we've got the VIP Discord channel. We have got the mentorship program. And you can become a member of our YouTube channel as well. All right. So if you're interested in any of them things, they are all in the video description, guys. Check them out. Um, the last one to, for today is Euro Aussie dollar. We were looking at this yesterday as well. So if we look at the day chart, yeah, you know, price has come down to a beautiful level. Let me zoom out a little bit. This, this level through here. Okay. So price has come down to this nice level. And we've also got the moving average 20 as well. So it's like double support in here. All right. It wasn't a trade yesterday because these candles were so bearish. But then we've got this bullish candle that's formed at this level. Um, obviously, it's not as bullish as the previous candle is bearish, but buyers have entered the market here. OK, um, so we can consider buys, you know, and again, potentially back up to these last highs. OK, um, so that's the idea, guys. But if we look at the H4, this might prove a little bit difficult to trade today. OK, because if we look at the H4, everything is telling me that this is going to make it back down to these lows. OK, that's what it's telling me on the H4. OK, and it's also telling me this on the H1. Yeah, because we have had a break in structure. Yeah, we clearly have. We've broken this low, even these lows. So, you know, everything's telling me it's going to come down. All right. But once we get back to these lows, guys, you know, anywhere in, in this gray zone, yeah, it could hit this level here or it could react at these lows. But we need a bullish reaction. OK, so once it comes down to here, we need a bullish reaction, guys. Then we can potentially start buying this pair. OK, what I would really like to see is this, you know, like we're seeing a breakdown in H1 structure. I would like to see price come back down and then on the H1, we perhaps get something like this and a build up of structure. OK, breaks this level and we then can start buying this pair. All right. Um, so, yeah, that's what I will be looking for as well for Euro, Aussie, dollar. And we can start taking this higher. 
All right, guys. So, yeah, those are my trade ideas for today. Um, let's take a look at the news now. So, news for Friday, the 25th of August. Um, so, overnight, guys, yeah, this is important for the end. The CPI figures were a little worse than expected, but that hasn't affected that yen strength we were seeing yesterday. Um, the first piece of news we're really interested in today, guys, is this. At 7 o'clock, London GMT, we've got the German GDP figures, year on year, quarter on quarter. So this is obviously going to affect any euro pairs, okay? So must be aware of this news, guys. Um, if we carry on down, the only other piece of news we're interested in is this. So Fed Chair Powell is speaking. I believe he's speaking from Jackson Hole. Um, but yeah. Fed Chair Powell is speaking at five past three today. So obviously when he speaks, he can really move the markets. He's quite a powerful man. <laughs> um, so yeah, must keep an eye out for this, guys. Yeah. Um, he can move, he can pretty much move all currency pairs. So, but after that, guys, there's nothing else for us to worry about. So yeah, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the vid. If you have, please subscribe, like, and share. Have a great trading day, a great weekend, uh, and I'll see you next week.